Flooded outboards suck. Like they literally suck in too much gas and stop working. I'm gonna take this carb off this motor, tear it apart so you can see all the mechanisms that control gas flow and what to look for if you're having flooding issues. And then we're also going to intentionally flood this guy and I'm gonna walk through some easy steps to start a flooded motor. If the motor gets too much gas, it's not going to work. See, gas has this thing called an upper explosive limit. It has to have the proper amount of oxygen. So if there's too much gas, the spark plug is not going to ignite it. It's going to foul up and it's just going to stop working. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take this carb off. I'm going to tear it apart so you can understand what's happening when you have a carb that's causing your motor to flood. <laughs> This is the carb bowl. It is the part of the carburetor that holds the gas. The gas tank has no idea how much gas is in the carb. So the carb has to control gas flow from the gas tank. And here's the carb bowl I just took off. Gas goes in the gas inlet here. It goes through a machined channel. Right here is where the gas comes out into your carb bowl. There's a needle valve in there that's controlled by the float. So as the gas level in the bowl fills up, the float goes up and that needle valve stops the incoming flow of gas. So that's how it controls the gas level. There is your main jet. The jet is basically where, how the gas transfers from your carb bowl into your carb bore here. A little brass thing in the middle back there, that's your main jet. So as air is flowing through the carb bore, it creates what's called the Venturi effect. There's low pressure that's created at that jet and it basically sucks gas from your carb bowl. The jet vaporizes it in this bore here and it gets sucked into your engine. In this position, gas will be flowing in the carb. Fuel level is raising in the carb bowl until it hits this spot right here, bam. So guess what that does? It keeps your carb from flooding with gas. If this doesn't work, it's going to overflow into the bore here and guess where it's going to end up? It's going to end up in your motor. Your motor is going to get too much gas, not enough oxygen. It's going to saturate your spark plug and you're just not going to get a spark. Why would the float and the needle valve stop working? So the main reason is your float valve here, the needle valve, has dirt or contamination. That is preventing it from seating fully. And if it doesn't see fully, you're gonna continuously get gas flowing into your carb. If you have dirt in the bottom of your carb bowl and you're having flooding issues, that's probably your problem. Another issue is your float could be broke. If you've got a hollow float and it's got a crack in it, it's not gonna float anymore. It's always gonna stay in the downward position and then you're gonna flood. If your float is rubbing against something, let's say your float is rubbing against the side of your carb bowl, then it's not going to operate properly. It's going to stay in the downward position and never shut off flow of gas. Another issue is the linkage here could be bent. So the linkage in the arm that connects your float to your needle valve, it could be bent. So your float could be in an upward position, but your needle valve could be in a lower position. So when your needle valve's in a lower position, it's not gonna stop the flow of gas and you're gonna flood your carb. The other reason is your choke. So when your choke is on like that, guess what that stops? It stops airflow. So as you can see, open, air flows through the bore, closed, air is choked off. That's why it's called the choke, it chokes air off. Guess what happens when the choke is closed? Your motor is gonna suck more gas out of your carb bowl. So sometimes you can have your choke on when you don't need it and you're sending too much gas. You're not sending enough air. More gas can cause flooding. Also, this part of the carb is sometimes hooked up to an air filter. So if your air filter or your breather here is clogged up, guess what that does? It acts like the choke. It doesn't let air flow. So your engine is sucking more gas. You could have a wasp nest or something built up here. It's not letting air flow. You're getting too much gas. The engine is literally sucking gas out of your carb bowl when you are restricting airflow. So how do you know if you've got a mechanical issue that's causing flooding? If you ever see gas dripping from any of these areas here, especially through 
the throttle shaft. If you see gas dripping out of these vent tubes, these vent tubes are routed down the bottom of the motor out of the cowl to get flooded gas out away from your engine. If you see gas in the water below your outboard, more than likely it flooded through these tubes and you've got a problem. So if you ever see gas flowing out, you be careful, shut it off, and get back to the ramp with your trolling motor, make sure you don't have any heat sources and just make sure that you're extra safe and always have a fire extinguisher on your boat. Another reason why your outboard would flood has to do with your fuel pump. A lot of these motors have a diaphragm fuel pump that has a linkage that mates with a crankshaft. And if that rips, fuel can make its way to your cylinder. And the final reason why you would flood is you just pull and pull and pull and the motor doesn't start and you just send a crap ton of gas to the motor. I'm going to take you through some easy minor flooding starting procedures. And remember, this is for minor flooding. If you've got gas dripping out of your carb or out of your motor anywhere, you don't want to start it. You want to kill it, kill the gas valve, put your cigarette out. Because if it's overflowing, you start and it's not going to help anything. It's just going to make it worse. So here we go. We're going to go through the starting procedure for minor flooding. The key point in starting a flooded motor is to maximize airflow and minimize gas going into your motor. Remember, a flooded motor means you have too much gas in your cylinder. The spark plug is wet. You've got to draw that out. You do that by giving it 100% throttle, no choke. To flood this guy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the emergency lanyard. That's going to keep it from having any spark. I'm going to give it full choke and full throttle. That is going to give it max gas and minimum air. I'm going to pull about seven times until I smell gas and then that means it's flooded. And then once it's flooded, put the emergency lanyard back in. I'm going to give it max throttle, 100% throttle and no choke. That's going to give it max air and minimum gas. You want to get as much airflow flowing through that motor to clear off the gas and to start drying out your spark plug in the cylinder. That's the key point. 100% choke, emergency lanyards out, no spark, 100% throttle. This is going to flood it. All right, eight pulls. I'll give it one more. I'll go to 10. Nine, 10. Okay. I'm starting to smell some gas. All right, I'm gonna put the lanyard back in. It's definitely flooded. I can, I can smell it. Choke all the way in. All right, 100% throttle. And I'm gonna give it some pulls until it starts and I'm gonna kill that throttle. So hopefully it starts. <laughs> Two, three, four. Ah. There we go. And then, as I said, you got to kill that throttle pretty quick. All right. So, another thing you can do if you are in an emergency situation, you can pull your spark plug out. What that's going to do is if it's flooded, it's gonna be wet. And you can sit it out in the sun and just let it dry. I appreciate the view. If you got anything out of this video, hit subscribe down below. It helps help small YouTube channels tremendously. You have no idea. And as always, if you're on the water, pick up your trash. Don't be the person that ruins it for everybody. Thank you. Later.